Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. And today we're going to cover the three things that cannot be used as a grounding electrode. We're going to be in 250.52. It's a very short piece of 250. Highly recommend you go over and read it. You'll actually learn quite a bit. But first, let's clarify what we're talking about today. We're talking about grounding electrodes themselves. Some examples are ground rods, or maybe your concrete encased electrode, your footing rebar. We call it a oofer ground or cold water lines. These are just some of the examples of grounding electrodes that you are allowed to use in the NEC. Today we're going to cover the three that you're not allowed to use. Let's get to it. All right, the first one that we're not allowed to use is underground gas line, which makes a lot of sense. We don't want any lightning strikes or any other surges or any other type of maybe objectional current trying to flow back to the transformer in the event of a open neutral. We would not want any of that happening along the path of a gas line. And that makes a lot of sense. So it may seem like a robust idea because it's, you know, more than 10 feet underground. It may be a very large pipe, maybe even going to a large underground metal tank. But we don't want that to be any part of the grounding electrode system. So we're not allowed to use gas pipes as grounding electrodes. But I do want to mention that you may still be required to bond the gas line. Bonding and grounding electrode systems are two different things, and you're definitely going to want to bond your gas line if it's required by 250. So you're going to have to read through there. It's The code states that if it's likely to become energized, and you have to work that out with your electrical inspector. Remember, all of these things need to be worked out with your local electrical inspector and also pass local ordinances. Now, let's look at the second one. The second thing that we're not allowed to use, and surprisingly enough, is aluminum. So it just prohibits all aluminum from being a part of a grounding electrode. So not aluminum rod, not aluminum pipe, not aluminum ground rod, doesn't matter what it is, you can't have an aluminum plate electrode. No part of aluminum is allowed to be a part of the grounding electrode. And that makes a lot of sense because you're not allowed to terminate any aluminum closer than 18 inches to the ground when it comes to grounding electrode systems. So it makes sense that you wouldn't have that be in contact with the direct earth either. So this is just one thing. It doesn't matter what type of aluminum it is. You are not allowed to use aluminum at all for a grounding electrode. And the third thing that we're not allowed to use is any part of a pool or the rebar that goes into a pool, basically anything to do with the pool. And this one is a little more in depth. So this is a much broader lesson, but I'm going to try to scrape the surface for the point of us not wanting to use this as a grounding electrode. It seems like it would be the best electrode out there, right? You have a giant pool, perhaps with a concrete steel sidewalk. Maybe even it's a gunite pool. It's completely steel uh, rebar with concrete, and you have a giant electrode outside. So you would think, hey, why would you not want to use that? It would provide a super robust you know, grounding electrode system. But that's actually the opposite of what we want to do. Now, we want the equipotential bond to be very robust, and we want everything out there to be at the same potential, and we do want a, a great fault path back in the event of an actual fault. But we want the wire connecting the pool and the panel that it's fed from to actually be only a number 12. We don't want a large wire going from the pool itself back to the remote panel board or wherever it's at. Now you may be required to do larger than a number 12 depending on your scenario, but we want whatever grounding conductor is going back to from the pool to the panel to be small. And the reason is, is we never want current flowing from the home out on the pool. It's gonna, current's gonna take any and all paths back to the source. Now it will take the easiest path back, which if the system's installed correctly should be the grounded conductor, the neutral conductor. It should flow along the circuit and try to get back toward the transformer. But in the event of an open neutral from the utility, it's going to use any and all paths to try to get back to the source. And if we've created a super robust grounding electrode system in this pool, you could potentially have objectional current flowing back on the pool trying to get back to the source. In the same way, we don't want lightning to strike at the house and a super robust path through the pool because lightning could strike the house, try to ride out back to the earth, and unintentionally ride back out to the pool, and potentially someone could be in the pool. So there are many reasons why we do not want 
the pool or any of its steel or any part of it to be a part of the grounding electrode system. Therefore, it's not allowed to be a grounding electrode. Now, I just scratched the surface on that. It's a very complex subject. I have many videos about equipotential bonding and all of that. If you have any questions, you can leave it. Uh, I wouldn't leave it in the comments. It, I don't get a chance to answer many of those questions. But if you'll email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com, I'd love to discuss it more with you. But the, the biggest thing that we want to take away from today is that we cannot use any part of it as the grounding electrode system. So that way we don't have any lightning strikes, surges, or any objectional current flowing back on the pool and potentially through you. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. If there's anything that I can do to help you in life or business, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.